right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Thank you so much for joining me again for another vlog video. That's a little bit of a, a Ruby Roo thing right there. For another vlog video, for another vlog. Anyway, got a lot of cool stuff to uh, to talk about today. Um, first things first, I'm going to mention, mention this again on Monday. Uh, I'm going to try out a new schedule here. We're going to kind of say goodbye to the Monday double features uh, for now, but on Monday, I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have a video, and on Tuesday, I'm gonna have another video, and then on Wednesday, we're gonna have another video, then on Thursday, we're gonna wrap it all up with the vlog, and then uh, do it all again the following week. Gonna see how this new format works out. If it doesn't work out, if people don't dig it, then uh, yeah, we'll just go back to the Monday double feature. I just got to thinking, you know, I had done the, du the Monday double feature for so long that, uh, you know, I, I felt like it needed some some change. Like before it was the Sunday double feature and then it was the Monday double feature and then I threw a couple Tuesday triple features in there, but uh, I just honestly have so much stuff to talk about that uh, that I want to do I want to do more videos and I'm like I got the time let's do uh, let's do more videos and like I said I do have a lot of stuff coming up and it's <sighs> the vape review game ain't what it used to be man um, and this is by no means a complaint and I'm not calling anybody out and if you're a rev reviewer and you're watching this and you think I'm calling you out I am not uh, I am not calling you out for me personally the way that I like to do things. I like to spend a good amount of time with something before I feel comfortable talking about it. Um, and I see these videos popping up on YouTube uh, for products that I just received as well. And I'm thinking in my head, that seems awfully like, how long did you have time to play with that? Like a day, two days? Everybody wants to be first. I don't give a shit about being first. I just want to be accurate and that's where that's where I'm at right now so a lot of the stuff that you'll even see in my first impressions even in this vlog there are already videos for from other people but I'm gonna take my time I'm gonna do it right and uh, I just uh, I just want to be accurate rather than first so uh, we do have a lot to cover like I said we're gonna do some beer some shout outs and some first impressions for some very interesting products um, we do have some retro vaping that I'm going to throw in there as well first thing I wanted to talk about real quick uh, Arizona Arizona wants to tax the crap out of your e-liquid they just want to tax the heck out of it and there's an annoying video that I hate watching because the girls like e-cigarettes should definitely be taxed exactly like tobacco products really what about zero nicotine liquids how are you gonna are you gonna tax a battery as a tobacco product you lunatics so Arizona they introduced a bill this Tuesday that would impose a luxury tax on liquid nicotine or e-liquid in electronic cigarettes I'm assuming even zero nicotine liquid, which makes no sense at all. They're calling it a luxury tax, which is strange considering they only use it to tax alcohol, cigarettes, and possibly now electronic cigarettes. But luxury tax would be a tax on things like uh, strippers or fast food or sodas or candy. Um, but they're not including those things. Um, really, this comes down to the fact that Arizona is one of the states that has seen a huge dip in their tax revenue because people are switching to electronic cigarettes. And it's not that they're like, oh man, now we have less money as a state. It's like, oh man, how are we going to pay back all this money we borrowed when we were depending on taxes from tobacco to pay back these loans? Now, states are scrambling. So that's exactly what's going on in Arizona, uh, which is uh, which is incredibly unfortunate. I'll post a link in the description uh, to this video where you can watch the video and where you can uh, you can read more about this uh, about this silliness, about these taxes that are going on. Um, and one more thing before we get to the beer, I just want to give a shout out to the vapors in Indiana. Um, they all showed up at... Uh, at the hearing for SB 539 in Indiana uh, that was going to heavily, heavily tax um, uh, e-liquid and electronic cigarettes, kind of like what's happening in Arizona, 
a bunch of people, man, in 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 like the hundred plus people, all showed up and all uh, expressed their disapproval of the bill, and that's all it takes. That's all it takes is showing up, saying I vape and I vote and I won't support you if you support this bill. There are power in our power. There is power in numbers. I do believe that, and that's all it takes is to get a group of people and go down and uh, you know more or less uh, protest. The I vape and I vote mentality is very, very good and uh, we need more people doing this. So I'll post a link in the description. Uh, it's it's a kind of a long video. It's like a 20 minute long video of, uh, of the vapors in Indiana going down and, uh, and expressing their disapproval of the uh, of the SB 539 um, bill, uh, which, is, uh, which is great. And like I said, I'll post a link in the description. It's very, very cool. Um, so what I wanna do now is talk about beer. And I am, ooh, I'm excited. Pardon me, I'm excited. I am excited about this beer. Let me get over to Beer Advocate so I, I, know, I, lo, I know literally nothing about this beer. But it comes from Jester King Brewery. One of my subscribers, Don, Dave, Don, I'm an asshole, uh, sent me this beer. It, it wasn't Warmouse. I, I, I do get beer from Warmouse, and it was not Mr. Warmouse. It was somebody else sent me this beer. Uh, anyway, I, I apologize. I can't remember your name. If you sent me this, uh, just let me know. Call me an asshole in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll give you proper credit. I will correct it. But this is called the Black Metal Farmhouse Imperial Stout. Oh, look how cool that is! Look how cool that is! And uh, it says unfiltered, unpasteurized, bottle conditioned ale. So this is a farmhouse style imperial stout. And if you look through the bottle, you can see a whole lot of sediment there at the bottom, which a lot of farmhouse ales have. Let's read off of the bottle. Um, Black Metal Farmhouse Imperial Stout, a.k.a. Iron Sword, a.k.a. Blackened Death, a.k.a. El Matillo de Muerte. <laughs> Black Metal is a cruel and punishing brew fermented by the sheer force of its awesome will, best enjoyed while pumping out blast beats, summoning trolls, or enjoying a nice leisurely reading of the Necronomicon. Jester King Craft Brewery is an authentic farmhouse brewery in beautiful Texas Hill County on the outskirts of Austin. We brew what we like to drink and we want and offer the rest to we brew what we like drink what we want and offer the rest to those who share our tastes that is fantastic um i'm really excited to get into this i don't really know anything about it according to beer advocate it says it's a russian imperial stout um, and on the bottle it says it's a farmhouse imperial stout thank god there's no corks because corks right into the trash can scare me i'm going to be pouring this into a you know a tulip style glass Let's do this again. It's it's just more comfortable to pour over my keyboard, and I don't know why that is. Oh, oh, sorry, MacBook. You got some Imperial Stout on you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is uh, this is a dark beer. Oh, this is a dark beer. Wow, this is a dark beer. Um, let me get uh, as much as I joke about uh. My pouring over my keyboard. I actually did just get something on my keyboard, which is no good. Which is no good at all. So here we are. We've got an incredibly dark head that I know that uh, Ruby Roo would approve of. Incredibly dark head on there. So this is a farmhouse imperial, imperial stout. Um, it says it's available in winter, of course. Uh, oh no, oh, I shouldn't have opened this. Well, I better enjoy it. It says this brew is retired. This beer is retired and no longer brewed by Jester King Brewery in, uh, in Texas. So I hope I enjoy it. Here's to you. Let's enjoy some black metal. It's very uh, carbonated. I get some like dark fruit notes like plum and, and berries. It's delicious. It smells great. Um, high alcohol content, so I'm sure over the course of this vlog, things will get uh, things will get ugh, silly because uh, you know I, I end up drinking during my vlogs. Mm, mm. 
God damn it, that is good. It has like a like a smoky flavor. It's it, it, it's like a it's like a campfire. A couple of days after you put it out, it still retains that like smokiness, or like you you smell your hoodie after you've been camping. And it has that like like that dense smoky flavor to it. That is exactly what I'm getting out of this. Mm. God damn it, that is delicious. Good job, good job, Jester King Brewery. And I apologize, I don't remember the name of the of the subscriber that sent this to me. And I feel like a terrible person because I've had this beer in my possession for so long. It has moved with me. I moved this beer in a box to my current residence. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the reality of it. So I wonder if I can search for Jester King. Uh, broaden my search. Damn it. Beer. Let's search in anywhere for beer. So there's a lot of beer. Beer. Chris? Okay. I, I'm not going to be able to find this fella's email. And I feel like a jerk. Because he did send me beer. And, uh, and, uh. Oh. I am a jerk. Chuck? No, it wasn't Chuck. I, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I feel terrible. But I am enjoying this beer uh, quite a bit. And I apologize. I'm not going to dwell on this. Um, but if you did send me this beer, shoot me an email. I will correct it next week. And uh, I will give you proper credit. Thank you so much. I'm gonna, I need to pour some, beer, some more in here. So yeah, like I said, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, after this beer portion, what I want to do is give... Give some shout outs. I want to give a shout out right now after I have some of this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I have a vape. And I know this isn't going to pair. It's the pineapple cake, but uh, I know it's not going to pair very well. Um, this is what I've been using a lot. Um, I talked about it last week that ABS just unregulated uh, box mod that I got from Select Vape, uh, Infinite CLT version 3 Atomizer, which is uh, pretty fucking fantastic right now. I'm going to be talking about cloud chasing and doing a little cloud chasing later on. Uh, I'm going to compare this Infinite CLT to another Atomizer, which has all this hype about it, but I feel like it's kind of a piece of junk. Delicious. God, don't you just love vaping? No matter what. Okay. So, I want to give a shout out to... Uh, let me get this on Google. Uh, um, sorry, I, I am... I should... Uh, um, ominous. Why would you name your company that right? Ominous. Ominous. Uh, mod holder. I know this came from uh, from Alex at Local Vape. I can't. Ominous. It says Ohm. O H M. O H M. O H M. No. Yes. Koval Vapes. Sure. Let's go over to Koval Vapes. Um, let me get a Mac mod here. I'm going to use the dot mod. Yes, I'm over 18. So this company Ominous. They make these mod holders, and I was skeptical at first because uh, this came from Alex, and he, he contacted me on Facebook a uh, long time ago. He's like, oh, I got these magnetic mod holders. I really think you'd be into them. And I'm like, ooh, eh, I don't, ooh, okay, I, I want to try it. I want to see what it's all about. And it's funny because they work really well. So they have a sticky pad on the back. So you could sticky this to your car or to your computer or to your wall right here. Like if I wanted to sticky this here, I could do that. And it holds your mod based on magnets. So it's magnetic, but there's a tiny little lip at the bottom which will catch the bottom of your mod. If that wasn't there, it would just kind of slide out. But it doesn't. It goes in there. Oh, Dang, that's strong. 
That's strong as hell. So if I put this like on the dashboard of my car, dude, I got a place right there to hold my mod. And it holds 18650 mods. It's even strong enough to hold some 26650 mods. It only works on tube mods, but it works. That's the thing. And it's it's like it's a soft sort of felty ish material on here so it won't uh it won't scratch up your mod like you can put your mod in there and feel uh feel pretty confident and i'll post a link in the description to koval vapes where you can pick up this ominous black magnetic mod holder um it's kind of rad i was thinking about sticking this in my car and then i was like uh I don't really vape enough tube mods in the car. When I'm out and about, I generally have a box. That's delicious. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I would stick this in my car. I was using it for a long time on my computer. Like, when I had my big desktop on my desk, this would magnetize to my, to my computer, and then my mod would magnetize to it, and it would all stay held up there uh, so I could just grab it and put it down. But anyway... This is a cool little product. It's 20 bucks and uh, it will hold your mods. It will hold your, your tube mods. And best of all, what I think is great is I love that lip at the bottom. So it just stops there. And I also like that it's, uh, that it's like slightly soft and felty so it won't, it won't fuck up or scratch your mods in any way, which is, uh, which is very cool. I also want to give another shout out right now to Aaron. So, uh, my vapes. This is my vape kit. My vapes. I don't know why I said my vapes. It's the my vape kit. Um, shopthevapekit.com. I'll put a link in the description. This is fan freaking tastic. Um, if you ever have to do traveling with your vape stuff, like if you're flying or if you're driving somewhere, um, I keep this separate from all my other vape stuff. I've got all of my rebuilding stuff and like a toolbox down here but I keep this separate because it comes with an ohm meter that I broke I'll show you that I broke it, it comes with an ohm meter that I broke is this the one I broke maybe this isn't the one I broke yeah this is the one I broke <laughs> I totally broke the fuck out of it uh, let's grab a tank I have to give a shout out to Mike too Yeah, um, this is the ohm meter that I broke. Uh, I, I pulled the connection off of it because I was being an idiot and I pulled way too hard and I just broke this 510 off of here. And I was, uh, I was bummed out because ohm meters are invaluable in the vaping world. Uh, what I'm going to do is steal the batteries out of here and uh, use it in my other ohm checker, but I, I was really bummed out and there's no way that this works. Nope. Oh yeah, it's all over the place. It's just reading like a crazy person. So that sucks because I broke it. But it does come with an ohm meter. It comes with an 18650 battery uh, carrying case. It comes with tweezers. It comes with wire cutters. It comes with pliers. And it comes with a set of uh, screwdrivers for tightening, uh, you know, screws on atomizers, as well as uh, these are really good for wrapping coils. These are what I use to wrap coils. And so, like I said, I keep this separate from all my other building stuff. And if I have to leave the house, I'll grab some cotton, I'll throw it in here, and I'll just bring this with me in case I need to do any, you know, rebuilding or fiddling or tweaking. And it's a little case, and it's freaking awesome. These are 40 bucks on the My shopthevapekit.com and Aaron is a good guy he sent me a couple links to some you know news that was going on and this is a company that I really feel really cares about vaping and uh, that's the vibe that I like to get from people I, I have this thing where I I vibe on on people and if you know I walk into a shop and I'm kind of feeling like a weird vibe like I don't have a good experience there but if I walk into another shop or I talk to somebody or you know I interact with somebody and I get a really good vibe then I'm more inclined to like you know support that person and 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 want to get to know that person and I get a really good vibe from Aaron and a really good vibe from the vape kit uh like i said i think it's cool i think it's super cool it has literally everything you need to rebuild your atomizer here in fact if you wanted to use this to just throw some cotton in you could have cotton and every tool you would ever need already in here with you ready to go 
and you just take this with your shit and you pack it up and, and you go. And I think that's great. I want to give a shout out to Aaron and uh, and the vape kit. And I'll put a link in the description to uh, to where you can purchase that if you're feeling so inclined. So I do have one more shout out that I wanted to do. And uh, I apologize. I should have been uh, looking for this. Yes, Bill. Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. So Bill contacted me and wanted to give me a build on a tank and i said do you want me to send you a tank and he said no i have it i have a tank i'm gonna build on it and i'm gonna and i'm gonna send it to you and so i've been kind of having a love affair that's not the tank this is the tank this is the tank right here and it's kind of amazing i'm gonna put it on uh on this which we're gonna do a first impressions of later so i'll try to hide it (laughs) <laughs> um but yeah it's it's uh it's rad it's rad so bill calls this the flavor god build and the flavor i mean is great it's, it's a great flavor but it looks like a like an upside down v8 engine or something like that so the coil goes up on one side and down on the other and then connects to the to the posts. So it's like these two upside down V's on both sides. And they're somewhat centered so that the wick comes out the bottom and then gets, you know, absorbed by the tank. Or absorbed by the by the liquid at the bottom of the flavor chamber in the tank or whatever we're calling that. And so uh, he said, I'm the first person to use it apart from himself. The, it's wicking amazingly. The flavor is unbelievable. It says... Uh, it is a Franken tank. This isn't even a tank that you can buy. It's just a tank that's assembled together. And I think it's great. I think everyone should do this. It's an Orchid V4 base. An Orchid V4 base, which I didn't know existed. Orchid V4 base. And the rest came from an E Leaf Limo RTA. Any suggestions on what could be done to make it better uh, and or build on the tank? Thinking of manufacturing the tank, but I don't know where to start. (laughs) Manufacturing a tank is hard. What I would do is just buy the parts, assemble the tank yourself, and uh, or just tell people how to get this Orchid V4 base. The rest is from a limo. The airflow is fantastic. It's nice and swooshy and open, and the build that he did on here is great. And I wish I had a picture of it before I had filled up this tank with liquid, but like I said, it's like two upside down Vs on each side. Like the coils come down, coils come down, and the wicks come out the bottom and go into those flavor channels, you know, into those juice channels where the juice can just come up wick up into the coils and i i haven't had a dry hit i've been rocking it at 50 watts it's a 0.7 ohm build i've been rocking it at 50 watts 5.4 volts it's fantastic just fantastic i love it bill thank you so much bill consider yourself shouted out Uh, i want to do one quick last shout out uh, because I have a lot to go through. So this is an old one. Uh, this is a really old one. This is a really old one. This comes from Holly, and this was sent to me back in. Uh, well, it was sent to me back in September. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you. Your videos helped me and my husband Justin making the change from cigarettes to vaping. I went to a local vape shop with him uh, and bought an I Taste MVP version two. And the juice, uh, and he smoked his last cigarette on 62714 and hasn't looked back. Congratulations, Justin. On July 7th, we found out my dad had stage 4 lung cancer <sighs> that had traveled to his bones and liver, and it was inoperable and too advanced for treatment. We had 40 days with him before his passing on 817. My biggest regret is that it is not finding your videos sooner so we could have possibly introduced my dad to vaping. Uh, and got some more time with him. This, this is what vaping is about. Cloud comps are fun. Trick comps are fun. Mods are fun. Addies are fun. Building is fun. Meets are fun. This, this is what vaping is about. 
Um, with all that being said, if you would give a shout out to my husband on being over two months smoke free, much longer at this point. I'm so proud of him and I love him very much for making the change for me. Thank you again for doing your videos. Uh, they are opening doors uh, for so many and changing and saving lives more than you will know. Uh, I, I love getting feedback like that. And yes, absolutely, this is what vaping is about. Vaping is so we don't have to smoke cigarettes. When it comes down to it and take away everything that exists in the vaping world, you take away meats and RDAs and, and, and cloud comps and all that. It is, it is so we don't have to smoke cigarettes because we were all smokers before. We were all slowly killing ourselves, and now we don't. Uh, now we don't have to do that. So Holly, yes, consider yourself shouted out. Justin, yes, consider yourself shouted out. I'm so sorry for your loss. I I hate hearing stories like that, and uh, hopefully, moving forward, we can we can get as many people into vaping, uh, into vaping as possible. So yes. We talked about beer, we did shout outs, we talked about Arizona. We're 27 minutes into this video. It is time for some first impressions. All right, well, first impressions, here we go. So I got something, I got this atomizer. So I was up at the OC Vapors meet um, last weekend and uh, I was given an atomizer that has really just impressed the crap out of me. So this comes from a company called Synthetic Loud, which, come on, that uh, that is a cool ass name. I was born in 19. Mm -hmm. um, it's from Synthetic Loud, and it's called the Aeolus RDA. The Aeolus. RDA, I believe. Uh, the copper version of it is a little on the pricey side. I have the stainless steel version, and I don't know if it's uh, if it's any cheaper. Oh, it's it's the same price. So these are a little bit pricey of an atomizer. Um, here's what I really like about this atomizer, and I post a picture on Instagram. But there's these slots up here, right? Slot on the top, slot on the top. And if I pop this off, which is possible, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, which is possible. Those slots, let me wipe this off. Those slots lead down to airflow holes right there. Let me look. Those slots lead down to airflow holes right there. So that's where your airflow is coming. There's no airflow holes in the tube itself. And there's a standard sort of three post deck on the inside. Um, this is a uh, 0 0.18 ohm build and it's been, uh, it's been amazing. The flavor on this is silly. The flavor is silly. I mean, it is. it has a great, great flavor. Um, it's designed to be anti-spit back, um, which I've found, unless I drag really hard, I don't really get any spit back into my mouth, which is great. It does not leak because all your juice is down here. You can blow out and the vapor will come out but you won't get any any juice dripping out of your atomizer. Sometimes, with uh, with some certain atomizers, it happens with the infinite uh, the CLT Infinite Version Three. As I blow out first, juice will come out. With this, not a chance. No spit back. Great flavor. Great performance. Ah, I. I want a bunch of these atomizers. It's hard for me now <laughs> to go back to using like a regular styled atomizer with holes in the side. These holes are high and they prevent spit back, they prevent leaking. It's it's kind of fantastic. It's great. It's just been it's just been really fantastic. Additionally, it's adjustable. So you can twist this top. And if I want to close off two of those holes, which I can do just like that. Oh, it's much tighter now. Wow, that's a tight draw. I'm going to open that back up. Um, you can set it up for single coils as well. You can close off one of the slots and leave one of the other slots open and set it up for a nice little single coil in there. The air comes in through those holes, goes down and around, and goes back up into your mouth, grabbing all of the vapor that's in the chamber. It's just been literally like 
uh, an absolute, absolute joy to use. I've gotten amazing flavor and really, really, really good vapor. The deck is a three post design. Like I said, it's really easy to build on. I'll post a link in the description to the Synthetic Cloud. I mean, this isn't my full review of this atomizer. It's 85 bucks, so you're gonna need your vape budget hands, but this is a unique enough design for me to really kind of be impressed with it. Like you see things like uh, the Mutation X version three, where it's like, oh, it's got weird slashy airflow, or this other turbo atomizer that has a fan on the inside. It's like, what, why, what is the purpose of that? This, I see value added, I see unique, Airflow, anti-spit back, anti-leaking, it's been fantastic. And uh, so thank you to Synthetic Cloud. Uh, it was really good to meet you guys at the vape meet and I am thoroughly enjoying this atomizer. Great, 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 never felt better. So next thing I have to talk about is, uh, is this. So this came directly from eLeaf. And I'm gonna do a video with this and the 30 watt together. This is the iStick 50 watt, and it's currently maxed out at 50 watts because this is a 0.6 ohm coil, and that's just where I like it. I like it nice and warm. It's giving me plenty of power. There's a USB charger on the back, and this is a bit differently shaped than the other iSticks. I mean, it's got that same sort of ovally design, but the display is on the front here, and your up-downs are on the front here, and your button is this curved button across the front, and it's 23 millimeters around, so this 22 millimeter atomizer sits on there nice. It almost looks like, if you look at it from the right angle, it almost looks like a tube mod until, boom, you turn it sideways. Obviously, it's not a tube mod. It's obviously not a tube mod, and this came directly from uh, eLeaf. Uh, ooh, I don't have the website pulled up. I stick 50 watt. Uh, eLeaf World, it has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery on the inside, 4,000, 4,400 ma or milliamp hour battery on the inside. Uh, goes up to 50 watts, maximum of 10 volts, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, I'm firing it down to 0.5 uh, ohms. It says it's rated down to 0 0.2 ohms. 0 0.2 ohms. Fuck, that is cool. That is cool. I am stupidly impressed by this, by this thing. And the other, I apologize, Robin, I apologize. Stuart, Stuart, did you steal my Toot Life shirt? That is, why would you, Stuart stole my Toot Life shirt? What the hell? It's great, this little thing is fantastic. Um, I've actually been rocking it with the E-Leaf uh, Mellow tank. I'm not quite at 50 watts. But uh, but yeah, with the E-Leaf Mellow tank and the iStick 50 watt, let's turn this back down to like uh, 40 watts, sure. You can buy this setup and get a cool tank that uses the Atlantis coil heads and uh, rock it on an ice stick. This is my leaving the house device now. Whenever I go out to dinner or go to a bar or go to a show or something, this is what I'm bringing with me. Plenty of power, plenty of battery life. The fit and finish on it is nice. It actually feels substantial. Like it doesn't feel like the ice stick the original 20 watt one is great, but it feels a little bit chintzy. And the 30 watt one is pretty great as well, but it still feels a little, eh, a little chintzy. This one feels substantial. You know what I mean? Like it feels like a finished product of a mod. It's all put together really well. USB is in the top now, so you don't have to charge it in the bottom. You can set it down and charge it. It's been uh, it's been great. It's been like honestly a, a joy to use. Anyway, I'll have a follow up. Like I said uh, in a future video, we're gonna do the thirty watt and the fifty watt head to head, and that might not be a fair comparison because one obviously has more power, but not everybody's looking for fifty watts of power. Just because it's there, you don't need to use it, and that's what I tell people a lot. It's like. 
you know, some guy will email me like, I just use an Aspire Nautilus. Do I even need to bother getting a 50 watt or 100 watt mod? It's like, well, just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it. It's there for when you want to use it. So if you upgrade to an RBA or an RTA or, you know, a rebuildable of some sort and you want to build like a 0.5 ohm coil, yeah, the power will be there. You don't have to use it. You can turn it down to 10 watts and use a Nautilus Mini on it or you can put an RDA on there, crank it up to 50 watts and blow some clouds, bro. Like I said, it's been great. It's been great to use. So... Moving forward, my last first impression that I want to do is uh, something that people already have reviews for up again, but I haven't really spent enough time with it to uh, make an accurate judgment on it. So I'm going to pop it on this. So this build came out super low, just, just super low. I'm going to get my rack because this thing leaks like you can't imagine. Now, for an everyday atomizer, this is never going to be my choice. It is never going to be my choice. This is the Turbo. This atomizer has a fan in it that sounds like robot sounds. Really? Someone thought this was a good idea. <laughs> and I certainly don't want to say anything bad about uh, about the company that sent it to me. This was sent to me via Ultramist Vaping. They're a fantastic company. And they happen to sell this very, very silly atomizer. So this is supposed to be a... Uh, why can't I get this top cap off? There's no uh, drip tip. You just put this glass on here. And that, that is your drip tip. It's a very, very wide bore, uh, but you can't drip through it because there's a fan in the way. So when you want to drip, you have to pull the whole cap off every time. You can't, you, you can't drip through it because there's a fan. There's a, there's a little spinning fan in there. So the idea behind this is... The idea behind this is that it's going to cool down the vapor... So you can take a longer hit during cloud comps. And as such, taking that longer hit will produce much, much more vapor. Now the way that this deck is, the center post is really high and the two posts on the side are low. So vertical coils is going to be your best bet, in my opinion. Now, these vertical coils ohmed out very, very low to 0 0.08. No? Yeah, 0 0.08 ohms. They produce a really good amount of vapor. Really good amount of vapor. I don't know what's happening between here and there, but for some reason, let's put the fan on. I'm going to open up the airflow all the way. It just doesn't produce that much vapor for me. And I have a feeling it's because of these airflow holes. The airflow holes aren't uh, targeted anywhere. It's the symbol. That's where the air comes in. That's the ohm symbol in uh, Sanskrit, I believe is what I read. It's not directed anywhere. It's just flowing kind of all over the place. I'll try. It's, it's a good amount of vapor and on camera it looks amazing. But as I'm looking at it, it doesn't look dense. It doesn't look like it has a lot of density to it. Let's try again. I'm going to blow out, then, then inhale. It does not have a lot of density to it. In fact, if I take off this silly fan thing that I just like playing with... Makes it sound like you're vaping a goddamn cartoon. Let's put some more juice on here. And this is a high VG juice. This isn't anything to blow your nose at. This is a high VG juice that I got from Local Vape. I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to put it right there at the coils. And what I'm going to do is take the fan off and I'm going to use a chuff cap on top. 
looks much cooler IMO and it gives you the same obscene amount of airflow. Hmm, that cloud is definitely more dense. Definitely like a hundred percent more dense. Hundred percent more dense. Way more dense. And the vapor isn't even that hot. This vapor isn't so hot that I would go, wow, I wish there was a fan in here that sounded like a robot so that it would cool that vapor down before it gets into my mouth. I think this is, uh, again, Ultramist Vaping, you are a great company. Thank you for sending this my way. I think this atomizer is kind of a joke. Um, I'm getting better clouds without the fan. It's not a bad atomizer. It's built well. It's a novelty. It has a fan in it, and you can't take the fan out of it unless you rock it with a chuff cap. That's just how I feel. Again, these are all just my opinions. I'm going to spend a little bit more time with this atomizer. I'm going to blow some clouds. There's a cloud comp this weekend. Maybe I'll go enter a cloud comp with this thing. See how it performs in the competition world. As it stands, the airflow is huge. It's designed to produce huge clouds. The fan on the inside sounds annoying as fuck, and it doesn't contribute to my overall vaping experience. That's just how it is. One more time with the chuff. Let's do this. Much denser. Much denser clouds. Much more dense clouds. Much more dense clouds, and I don't have to listen to this. Don't have to listen to this fan. And I've tried uh, closing off these airflow holes a little bit. Of course, it's leaking like crazy. I'm going to try shutting these airflow holes down. Because that is a possibility. Someone is calling me right now. Nope, sorry. It's vlog time. I can't answer a phone call. I'm going to try shutting off these airflow holes a little bit. See, that is much better. That is a dense cloud. That's a much denser cloud, and I can drag for longer. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put that on the back burner for now. I'm going to keep using it, and I'll report back later via full video to see, uh, <laughs> to see how it goes. I'm going to have a drink of beer. And right now, what we're going to do... We're gonna get into some retro vaping. All right, retro vaping time. So we're gonna go back to 2012, I believe. 2011? 2011. Let's call it 2011. That's when the first VaporCon was, right? This right here. Do you see this? You're going to see this, and you're going to go, oh, that's a K100, or that's a K101. No. The K100 is actually a clone of this device right here. So this is an Empire mod. This was a mech mod with a dedicated 901 atomizer connection on here, and you got a matching drip shield. You know, you buy your matching drip shield to match your tube. And this one uh, kind of looks like stacked casino chips to me. They didn't all look like this, but I liked this one. I liked the gold one, and I got this... Uh, where did I get this? Got this at the first VaporCon, I believe. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an 18650 and some juice. There's a kick in here! There is a kick in this mod. Holy crap. That's how long it's been since I've looked at this... So it telescopes. It telescopes up and down. There is a kick in here. I apologize if that's noisy. How am I going to get this kick out of here? I'm just going to leave it in there. I can't get this kick out of here. There is a kick. For those wondering what a kick is, once upon a time, before we had variable wattage, 
Um, a lot of people had mech mods, and what you could do with a kick is it's a little drop-in module that will turn your device into a variable wattage mod up to 10 watts with the kick one and up to 15 watts with the kick two. So for those of us running cardo tanks, do I even have a battery? I have an 18650 battery. Oh, here goes. I'm going to grab this little uh, 18350 battery and I'm going to put it in here so that I can use that kick because that is cool. I wonder if it'll fire this atomizer. This atomizer has been on here, I believe. Oh, it works! I believe since I got it. Uh, this is a low res, meaning low res once upon a time was, uh, was like 2 ohms to 1.5 ohms. I don't think there's any juice in here, so I'm going to grab some juice. And I'm going to drip a couple drops in here. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. So yeah, this was the this was the this was the Empire mod. The drip shield, like I talked about before, prevented uh, juice from leaking everywhere. In fact, you could recycle the juice. If the juice leaked out of the little hole on the side of the atomizer, it just stayed in there because of the O-rings on the bottom. And when you took a drag in. You can pull that juice back in. The draw on this is just tight as hell. But this is kicked. This has a kick in it that I'm assuming is set to 10 watts. Little 18350 battery. Let's have a toot, shall we? Wow. Enter a cloud comp with this and you will lose. Um, it's unbelievable how little vapor, and that felt like a ton of vapor back in the day. Like, once upon a time, that was rocking. I mean, this this was my go-to setup. I used this forever. I used this for a long-ass time. Unbelievable. Just thin, wispy vapor. You know, granted, this isn't the best example of what a 901 atomizer can do. It's a disposable atomizer, which means once it died, that's it. It, it was dead. And like I said, this came with a dedicated 901 connection on it, which is uh, horribly, horribly dirty. Horribly dirty. Oh, it's much cleaner now dedicated 901 atomizer on top and for those of you that don't know what a 901 is it's a 901 it was just an atomizer it was a male connection to a female atomizer rather than the 510 which is a female connection with a male atomizer in fact if you've ever opened up your uh, your your little ohm checker and you wonder what that other connection is on there that is a 901, and I don't know why ohm checkers have the 901. They should really just have 510s at this point. But that was a 901, and this was the shit back in the day. In fact, I don't even think that Empire Mods still sells EmpireMods.com. I don't think Keith at Empire Mods even still sells these devices. No, nope, he sells mech mods now. Uh, he still has some drip shields. The new Sigeli Fuchai. Empire Drip Shields, Empire Drip Shields. No, there is no, he doesn't have the Empire mod on his site anymore. At least that I can find right now, but he does have the Atlantis. He's got the IPV version 2. So he's moved on with the times. He doesn't just keep using uh, Empire mods. But at every vape meet that I went to, Vape Bash, both Vapor Cons, there was a line out the door to get in line to get your empire mod it's a mechanical mod there was a line out the door by the time i got over there he was basically sold out and this was within two hours of opening the event sold out of empire mods he would bring as many as he had and sell them all out at these vape meets there was a line it was crazy and you know, I was at Vape Bash and there was a line for people to get Zen mods and, and there was another line for people to get Hannah mods and Hannah had this weird system of keys and numbers to get your mod and it was just, I was kind of like, ah, oh, that's really bizarre and then I thought, well, I remember waiting in line at VaporCon in front of the Empire Mods booth, a line that went, you know, around the room 
to get this little number to get to get an Empire mod and uh, it doesn't get used anymore obviously it's an aluminum mechanical mod but once upon a time this was it this was this was the sick thing to have this was like the caravella of its time it still vapes it's just not amazing unbelievable that takes me back holy crap that takes me back so there you go there's some retro vaping uh one thing that i wanted to do was uh i did actually i did actually want to get to some viewer mail viewer mail all right viewer mail time let me have some beer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. <coughs> Went down the wrong, went down the wrong thing. Um, so I, I just realized you're probably wondering what mod this is that I'm using it on. So this came from, uh, this came from Young June out of China. This is the Tesla Invader version two. Uh, it's they call it a half mech because it uses dual 18650s and a MOSFET switch. And uh, I've just been enjoying using it. I don't know that I'll do a full review for this, but. It's like 40 bucks, and it's a it's a mech mod for all accounts and purposes. This is 0 0.2 ohm build on here, uh, and it's been uh, it's been fantastic. <coughs> holy, holy crap! <coughs> holy crap! That was dry. I hate dry. I hate dry wicks, and I just dripped. And I don't know why that was dry. The struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. All right, so my first viewer mail today comes from a fella that I wanted to address this on, uh, on a video. We'll call him James. I have a question. Is it okay to protect B&Ms, so brick and mortar retail stores, that have shady practices? For example, selling products at a 500% markup to the vaping community. I think it's bad for business and also bad for the future of vaping as the powers that be are looking for excuses to shut us down. I was overcharged for a product. I emailed the business and they didn't reply. I brought up the conversation on Facebook and people were okay with the practice and tried to protect the seller. I personally think that taking up these types of business practices are detrimental in the message that this community wants to send to the public and it will hinder our movement. Here's the thing, James. I definitely do not agree with you. Um, brick and mortar stores can operate however they want because they are a private business. If they sell Dave's awesome atomizer for $70, but a brick and mortar store two miles away sells, da sells Dave's awesome atomizer for $40, that's capitalism. <laughs> that means that as word of mouth spreads and someone goes, hey, uh, Stuart, you know about vaping, right? I'm looking for a Dave's Awesome Atomizer. Do you know who has them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this place sells them for 70 bucks, but there's another place a mile away. They sell them for 40 bucks. So me, as a consumer, I'm going to go, oh, well, I'm going to go to this other place. I'm going to go to Allen's Vape Shop and buy it for 40 bucks rather than go over here and buy it for 70 bucks. This is, this is the way the world works. Uh, if you go to Target, you could probably find... Uh, an iPhone cable for mm, 20 bucks. If you go to Best Buy, that same iPhone cable might be 25, 30 bucks. If you go somewhere else, it could be 40, 45 bucks. It's up to them to set their own prices to meet the market that they're in. And I'm not an economics person, but I'm a freedom person. And as a private business, I think that you can charge whatever you want. Um, if you go to a restaurant and order a burger, if I go down to my local place that's you know a block away from me, I can get a burger and tots for 12 bucks, right? Or I could go down the street to the fancy brewery and pay $17 for a burger and tots. 
that's up to me to decide where I want to go. Uh, I don't think it's ripping off the community, and I don't really see, in all honesty, how it affects how, like, legal-wise, like, if they're trying to ban electronic cigarettes... Why would the cost of one shop versus another shop affect that? I, ju- I just don't see it. To me, that's just business. To me, that's, the, that's capitalism. That's the free market economy of this store charging more than this store or this store charging less than this store. That's just, that's just how it goes. And I understand your frustration as far as you overpaid for something and now you're you are taking up your your anger with the store saying hey you charged me way too much for this shop around you know what i mean um it now if the store doesn't accept your refund and they have a big sign that says no refunds then again that's up that's up to the private business i do believe that private businesses have the freedom to operate as they see fit it would be the same thing as if there was a vape shop here and they said uh, you can only wear pants in this vape shop and then there's a vape shop here that uh, says oh you can wear shorts and pants and that's up to you to decide you don't give your business to the pants only because you want to wear shorts at the other vape shop that is a horrible analogy but it's basically the, the foundation of it vape shops can charge what they feel is reasonable and if it's too high then their numbers will drop and they won't get as much business and you go to the other vape shop that maybe charges more or maybe is a little bit nicer in the way that they treat their customers. That's that's how business, that's how uh, IMO, that's how, uh, that's how capitalism, that's how capitalism works. Um, I have another email here uh, and I apologize, I'm not going to be much help, but I had it bookmarked for a reason and I hope we'll find that reason uh, once we get into it. I'm kind of like Michael Scott, sometimes I just start talking and I don't know where it's going, but I hope I find it along the way. Hey Nick, uh, my Copper 49 mag- magnets are fucky. Yes, someone else who uses the term fucky. Um, my 49 magnets are fucky and I was wondering if you knew of anywhere to get magnets to replace them or where to get a replacement switch. If you're feeling really generous and have a replacement button uh, anyway, thanks for your great work. Keep up the blog Thursday, blah, 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 Kieran. So I don't have a 4.9 switch for you, but uh, I recently answered this same exact question in Vape News Magazine. I have a column now in Vape News Magazine that's called Ask Rim Green. And uh, people will write in their questions and I will answer them to the best of my ability. So I don't have uh, the exact website anymore. So we're going to go to vapenewsmagazine.com. And I'll post a link in the description if you're so interested. Vape News Magazine. Magazine.com. Uh, in fact, uh, what's her name? I'm a terrible person. New Age Cleopatra. I met New Age Cleopatra at the meet. Uh, super. Just a gosh. Super nice girl. She's going to be... Uh, She's going to be in the next issue of Vape News Magazine. So let's click to read this magazine. Let's see what I said in this exact... Whoa, no. Stop. Stop zooming in. Stop it. Uh, magazine's great. It's a great publication, IMO. So let's go to askgrimgreen.com. Um, this was my answer. A lot of the mechanical mods being produced today do not generally have interchangeable parts. So unless the creators of the mod came out with an upgraded switch and magnets, you might be out of luck, but do not lose hope. There are lots of places to get washer style magnets online. Chances are you can find some that will fit the inside of your switch. K&J Magnetics, which I'll post a link to in the description, is a great place to purchase washer style magnets or ring style magnets. They come in all shapes and sizes and usually have specific dimensions of the magnets listed. What you want to look for is two axially magnetized magnets. This means that the magnets are magnetized on the top and bottom rather than diametrically magnetized on the sides. When these axially magnetized Axially magnetized magnets are placed in opposition to each other. They will repel one another and act very much like a spring. Happy magnet hunting. And remember to keep the moving parts as well as the contacts of your mech mod clean at all times. Mech mods do need some tender loving care from time to time in order to keep working at peak performance. K&J Magnetics. Head over there. Measure with a ruler or calipers or something the size of the magnets that you need and get axially magnetized magnets and you could probably probably replace the magnets in your uh 
In your 4.9 mod, I apologize, I don't have a 4.9 mod. I do have a tugboat mod, but I do not, do not not have a, uh, have a 4.9 mod. I'm just gonna shoot you a quick response. Answered this <gasps> via vlog on Thursday. So this is going to be, uh, should I do one more viewer mail? Do we have time? I believe we have time. Answered this via vlog on Thursday. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, help, please. Oh, nope. There's another one. There was another one I wanted to do. Um, nope. That's not one. This is too long. Oh my gosh, people send me long emails. Long, just novelistic emails. Just novelistic emails. They're, they're so long. They're very, very, very long. Uh, I gave a shout out to Bill. Um, what? Oh, I wonder if I put that beer guy in this folder. Sorry, I'm not gonna... Yes, Brian. Did that come from Brian? Oh no, he sent me the belching beaver. Never mind, never mind. Uh, yes, so there was one, and this goes back a, a long way. Nope, I can't, I'm not going to use that one. I can't use that one because that got, uh, so this one. Um, a guy sent me an email with the title that said, uh, Vaping is considered a drug where I live which is crazy, and I'll, again, I'll post a link in the description to this. Um, uh, he, he says, uh, a friend of his uh, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, got arrested for vaping an IPV3 with an authentic plume veil. He was vaping in his car and got arrested for drug paraphernalia. They took his setup as evidence. Uh, they ended up giving him his juice pack but not his mod, and he spent five hours in a county jail. I vape in my car all the time, and this guy got arrested because he was vaping for drug paraphernalia. They confiscated his mod and atomizer. They gave him his juice back, and he spent five hours in a, uh, in a county jail. Uh, Haywood County, North Carolina. Um, a school district in western, western, western North Carolina is increasing punishments for having or using electronic cigarettes on campus. Okay, kind of different. Uh, school district will now classify violations involving e-cigarettes as possession of drug paraphernalia. Possession of drug paraphernalia? Here's the thing. This is a public school system which means the taxes that you pay to the federal government get used to build schools. These schools are putting in laws and rules that you will get arrested if you're vaping for possession of drug paraphernalia. Now, if it was a privately funded school, if it was a private school, I have no problem with this because as a private school, you are funded not by the public taxpayers, but by your own, uh, you know, funders and, and constituents. So if you have a private school, you can pass whatever crazy rules you want. You can have uniforms and hats on Sundays and whatever you want. But if you're a public, public school and you're being funded by the taxpayers of your county, city or state... Oh man, that's a tough call. I think it's a bunch of horse shit that they're calling vaping uh, possession of drug. Possession of drug paraphernalia. That is unbelievable. I'll post a link in the description to this article if you so desire to read it. Uh, but thank you. Uh, thank you for sending that my way. He didn't leave his, he didn't leave his name. Uh, his name's Casey. Thank you, Casey, for sending that my way. I think that is ridiculous. But I'm going to wrap this vlog up we're gonna call it good we drank beer we did shout outs we did some first impressions we vaped on the ridiculous fan fueled atomizer which produces uh no dense clouds whatsoever while there's a fan involved i do really feel like that fan just fucks everything up and it bothers me talked about the eye stick 50 watt which is impressing me on a daily basis we talked about that great aeolus 
atomizer. We drank some black metal beer. I feel much more evil now after having drank that black metal beer. And uh, yeah, we uh, we retro vaped on a classic on a classic Empire mod. Got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Got a lot of events that I'm attending as well. I'm going to try to make it up to an LA Vapors Club meet uh, eventually. I don't think I'm going to get to it this weekend. Maybe the next time that happens. But I'm going to be all over the place. Uh, I love uh, meeting people and hanging out with the community. It's all part of why I love doing what I do. Uh, vape meets are great. The next one I'm going to be attending is VCCC. VCCT in Tampa, Florida. Hoping to hang out with you, Prince Marky D. I know you're going to be there. Stoked to meet you. Stoked to hang out. If you're not aware, Prince Marky D was a, a member of the original Fat Boys, the 80s rap group, and I'm excited. Very excited to meet him. But got a lot of very cool stuff coming up. A lot of mech mods, a lot of atomizers, some regulated mods in there as well, including uh, all the Segelis. I'm going to do a video for those. Um, Neptune version 2 hybrid. I posted a picture on Instagram. Got that. Um, I'm not going to talk about the NES mod this time around just because I'm running out of time. But Joe Lit, you are the man. Consider yourself fist bumped. Um, stoked to hang out with you at Vape Bash. Got a lot of stuff for new people coming up as well. The Ego One is fantastic. I'm going to do a video for that. Got the uh, Nunchaku from Vision. Very cool. I'm going to do a video for that as well. But Things are moving forward and things are moving well here in the world of Grim Green Industries. Thank you so much for your support over uh, these weird times that I've been having. I'm finding my rut and I'm, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, hope to run into you at a vape meet soon, but until then, let's keep on vaping.